Hi there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop, and today I'm going to show you how to use the One Fell Swoop Photoshop Actions. Um, this is the photo that we're going to be working on today. Um, first things first is you want to install your actions. I've already done that, but I'm going to show you how you would do it if you haven't yet. Um, if you are on Photoshop Elements 11 and up, um, or CS or CC, then you'll be able to go to Window and then hit the Actions panel, and you will pull up this Actions panel. And then right up here in the top right, you'll notice this little button with like the downward facing arrow and the horizontal lines. Just click that and hit Load Actions from the flyout menu. Once this pops up, um, you will be able to navigate to wherever it is that you saved your downloaded file. Uh, mine's already pulled up for the PSE version, but let's say that you um, found your folder. This is the one fell swoop folder. Um, inside you'll notice two separate folders. Uh, one is for CS and CC and the other one is for um, Photoshop Elements or PSE. Um, since I'm working on Photoshop CC today, I'm going to open this one. And then you would click this actions file and hit load or you can just double click it and it will pop up. I've already loaded mine so I'm not going to do it again. I'm just going to hit cancel, but that's how you would if you needed to. <clears throat> Once you hit load, it will pop up here in your actions panel. Um, there's quite a few actions in this collection, so it's quite a scroll all the way down to the bottom. Um, but you can have a look. If you are in Photoshop Elements 11 and up, and if you are in Photoshop CS or CC, um, anything with this actions panel, any program that has this actions panel, um, you will have your Photoshop actions separated based on what they do to your image. These ones are image adjustments, which is your sharpening and your brightening and um, contrast and stuff like that. And then you'll have your paint on actions. These are the ones that have a layer mask. Um, that, well, they all have layer masks. So this is the one that has a black layer mask, which means it hides the action from your photo until you paint it on wherever you'd like it. Um, and then there's color toning actions. There's actions for overhead light, which put light right up at the top of your photo. You can make it look like it's behind your subject. Um, then there are matte actions. These ones are fun, like color mattes. They've got different color tones in there. Um, and then there's creamy and hazy actions, moody actions, black and white actions, and then your recipes. And then at the very bottom, you'll find your finalized actions. Um, if you are in Photoshop Elements 10 or below, yours will not be separated like this. Yours will all be in alphabetical order. But this collection does come with a cheat sheet that separates them into these categories and shows you which actions belong to which category. So you can refer to that if you don't have them separated like this. It also explains what each action does and kind of shows you some before and afters and um, some tips and stuff like that. So um, that is a PDF file located within your download. Um, okay, so to get started on this one, I'm going to use the recipe actions today. Um, the recipes do have individual actions. They're just inside one, so all you have to do is hit the play button one time, and it runs several actions on your photo at once. Um, if you are the kind of person who likes to stack and make your own recipes, you are more than welcome to use all of these individual actions as you see fit and kind of stack them yourself. Um, but there are these pre-made recipes down here to kind of show you which actions look good together and um, to also kind of speed your workflow. It runs several actions at once so that you don't have to go back and scroll through this list and hit play so many times. These are kind of um, already made edits for you. So what we're going to do, I'm going to use Vibrant Matte with Light. This one is my favorite. I use it on pretty much every photo um, that I've been editing lately. So I'm going to show you how this one works. So we're just going to hit play after we've selected it um, and hit the play button. And this will run several actions on your photo at one time. Once it's finished, a little message will pop up telling you um, how to tweak this action. There it is. Okay, so you just hit continue. And then what you're going to do is the action has ran, but we need to tweak it a little. Some images won't require any tweaking. If your subject was sitting down or something, this light wouldn't go over their faces. Um, so while you can adjust the opacity over here and kind of reduce it, if you want that strong, vibrant light, we're going to have to mask it off of our subject. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this, act, um, this folder go to the Northern Light um, folder, or file, I'm sorry, um, you can hit this eyeball right here to see which um, layer is affecting your photo. So if you're not sure where the light's coming from, just hit each of these eyeballs and you'll kind of see um, what it's doing to your photo. This one is a paint on action. That's just if you need a little bit of extra vibrance. So we'll just go in here and start tweaking. So um, this northern light action is the one where the light is coming from. We are going to select a black brush because our mask is white. 
a white mask means it's showing the effect on your image and a black brush means you're going to paint it off um, of any spots in your photo. Now my opacity is at 10%. You can up this to 30 or so. I just did that by hitting the three on my keyboard. Um, and then we're just going to paint this over our subject. Um, you can start at a lower, a lower opacity when you're working like around their head and their hair and stuff like that so that you can make sure that it's a nice subtle effect when you're painting it off. Um, and then you can make your brush smaller and kind of make sure you go over their eyes even more if you don't want that haze over their eyes. And then just kind of bring those shadows back out on their hair um, anywhere you want the light not to fall. You kind of want to reveal their faces in there. And then you do the same thing over here. And just kind of paint it off a little bit more. And you can do this as much as you like. Um, once I'm done with their faces, kind of like, um, getting them out from behind that hazy light, what you can do is put your opacity at 100% and then paint off anywhere else that you know you really don't want that, um, that haze. So on their clothes and um, their other you know, details here, I'm just going to remove this. And then if you need to add that light back in, you can always flip your brush back to white and paint it over them. Um, I'm going to go over their faces one more time with this, just kind of make sure that their features are nice and clear. Okay, so once that is done, you can then lower the opacity of this northern light action if you want to. If you still like that light, you just don't want it so bright, um, you can turn it down a little bit. Um, after that, you can come in here to the color enhance um, layer, and you can paint this on by grabbing a white brush. Since the mask is black, that means it's hiding the color enhancing from your photo, and you're going to paint it in with a white brush. And so you can do this. I'm going to do this at 50% opacity. And it's going to add a little contrast and kind of pop the colors. And it'll even make the light look a little bit more vibrant. And just sweep it over. I'm going to close this for a second while we work on our photo. And there we go. And you can go over their clothes to make them look nice and colorful compared to that background. And again, this um, layer is just optional. You can paint this on if you need a little color boosting. I'm going to go at 10% opacity and just paint it over them as well so they're nice and vibrant. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Okay, so after that, um, we've kind of worked our way up Northern Light and then Color Enhance. And then the last one is Winding Time. And this one is a contrasted kind of vibrant matte effect. So you can see how it affects your image. I like applying Winding Time over any of the overhead light actions because it kind of does boost that light and make it look really, um, I don't know, more vibrant. It kind of pops it out a little. It's not so hazy after that. And so once you're finished, you can close that recipe back up. You can turn it on and off and see how you like it. Um, we started out with a pretty cool colored image. So if you want to warm your photo up a little bit, you can use the color toning actions. You can just scroll up a little. They're kind of at the top. Um, sunny Glow is great. It provides like a really um, golden kind of warm tone. Um, it's a little overwhelming here. You can dr even drag it below your mat if you want and kind of see how that affects it. Um, you can lower the opacity here. Um, my favorite warming action that I really like to use is called Blowing Bubbles. And you can click that one. This one is more of like an, um, an orangey warm color. Not so yellow. It's more of like a golden, if that makes sense. Okay, so then once you play that one, you can lower the opacity of this or you can put it below your recipe. Um, usually I run the color toning action first and then I run the recipe on top of it. Um, but you are more than welcome to run these in any order that you please. And you can always drag your layers over here and kind of see how it affects and what it does. And then so feel free to turn your opacity of that up as you wish. Um, and so there it would be your edit. You can turn this one down a little if you feel like that's too much warming. Um, that's up to you. And then if you hold down your Alt or Option key and click the eyeball on your background layer, you can turn all of those off and see what you've done. Um, and it was just that one recipe that added the light and then this one uh, to warm your photo up a little bit. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Morgan Burks Photography, or you can write me an email at morgan at morganburks.com. Thanks so much and have a great day.